Hi, Richard Dennis here with another in my series of short biographies of notables of the early 20th century who are forgotten today. Hi, Richard Dennis here with more short biographies of people in the early 20th century. This is the second of three installments dealing with World War I ambulance drivers. For this one, I'm going to do something a little different. I'll tell you about three literary men who these days are not really forgotten, but whose ambulance driving in the war is not as well known. The first is Edward Estlin Cummings, better known as the poet E.E. E. Cummings. The day after the United States entered the war in 1917, Cummings volunteered to drive for the Norton Harges Ambulance Corps. Once in Paris, he and his friend William Slater Brown registered at the ambulance headquarters and went off to enjoy the Paris cafes, parks, nightclubs, and museums. Eventually, the two men were sent to a quiet sector where not much fighting was going on. In late September, Brown's letters home got him in trouble for questioning the conduct of the war. His friend Cummings was held for being Brown's friend and for refusing to say that he hated the Germans. Cummings ended, ended up in a harsh internment camp where he was held for three months before he was released thanks to the efforts of his parents and the U.S. State Department. In 1920, Cummings put the experience in his novel, The Enormous Room. Ernest Hemingway is another author who saw limited action as an ambulance driver. His name today is closely associated with World War I ambulance driving due to his novel, A Farewell to Arms, first published in 1929. In reality, he served in the American Red Cross in Italy for about five weeks, beginning in early June 1918. The unit in which he was assigned had an ambulance abundance of drivers and its sector had little military activity. Hemingway was bored. Sometime around June 22nd, he left the ambulance service and volunteered for the Red Cross Canteen Unit that delivered cigarettes and chocolates to the frontline soldiers. On July 8th, he was wounded by an Austrian trench mortar as he was making deliveries. He spent the next several months recovering, and in January 1919, Two months after the war ended, he boarded a ship back to America. It is not known if he ever got behind the wheel of an ambulance during his time in Italy. One driver who did extensive ambulance driving in both France and Italy was the novelist John Dos Passos. He volunteered for the Norton Harges Corps in 1917. While much of his duty was behind the front lines, he spent two weeks at Verdun, where some of the fiercest fighting of the war took place. During his time there, he endured nightly artillery bombardment and gas attacks. Soon after that, the U.S. Army took over ambulance duties in France from the two major volunteer organizations. The Army insisted that the volunteers enlist and become Army privates. Dos Passos, along with most of the Norton Harges volunteers, declined. Instead, he signed on as a volunteer with the American Red Cross in Italy. Dos Passos was a pacifist and outspoken in his sentiments that the war was being fought for the benefit of the rich and powerful and served no good purpose. Having managed to irritate his superiors in the American Red Cross, they refused to renew his term of service in June 1918. He sailed for home in July. Two years later, he published One Man's Initiation 1917, a biting anti-war novel based on his ambulance driving experience. These three literary men, like so many other men and women, had their lives changed forever by their experiences in the First World War. An excellent source of information about these men and other drivers is the book Gentlemen Volunteers, the story of the American ambulance drivers in the Great War, August 1914 to September 1918. 
by Arlen J. Hansen. I also recommend The Fourteenth Chronicle, Letters and Diaries of John Dos Passos, with its brutally frank description of the hellish reality of the war. I hope you have enjoyed this brief look at three celebrated authors. In the upcoming third installment, I will tell you about some other famous people who volunteered to drive but did not get the chance, and about some overlooked women who did drive. And please check out my novel, Fume Restoral, on sale on Amazon and other fine retail sites. Mm -hmm.